Okay, I thought about sharing some information and personal findings regarding the Bitspower custom DDR5 uh, memory heatsinks. I actually obtained those heatsinks for the Corsair DDR5 competition as I wanted to compare how different heatsinks could, uh, could like differ like possibly on LN2 cooling. That far I, I was only using the custom heatsinks made by Barks. Those heatsinks are specifically designed for uh, thermal paste use on the memory chips themselves. So uh, the custom heatsinks from Barks, they are copper, they are pretty heavy. So uh, the actual mounting pressure can actually vary from IC to IC. So uh, the uh, bits power heatsinks, they are actually meant for thermal pad use. So if you use thermal pad instead of thermal paste, I think it's a lot more like idiot proof way to get good contact on the memory heatsinks and get like good enough mounting pressure. Memory heatsinks have been like a reason for a lot of drama during the past years or so because many heatsinks didn't have let's say like enough mounting pressure and so on. Like some of the heatsinks by EK Waterblocks for example, the uh, later, later revisions of the EK SF3D uh, heatsinks, they had very poor mounting pressure and you could just easily rip off the heat sinks from the me memory sticks when you uh, wanted to take the memories out from your motherboard. So uh, I can say it right from the get-go I was very pleasantly surprised with the uh, custom heat sinks from Bits Power. I actually uh, like them a little bit more than the custom heat sinks made by Barks. So uh, the Bits Power has a few options when it comes to uh, like memory heat sinks on their website. I think they only sell these uh, heatsink options through their website. They have they have some very generic uh, memory heatsinks that are suitable with uh, some water blocks, but they are not compatible with the uh, LN2 uh, container for me for memory which they are selling. Then they have uh, these DDR5 memory heatsinks, and I think these should be compatible even with DDR4. I think I should be correct about that because they did have memory heatsinks for DDR4 when they released the whole uh, container as well as these uh, memory heatsinks for, for memory that was newest at the time of uh, release of the container and now they have these uh, fine-tuned options for DDR5 they have both uh, aluminium and copper based heatsinks for the memory the copper ones are a bit more expensive and I think you have to buy them like individually so uh, like in sets of one normally memory heatsinks are paired, so you get like uh, heatsinks for two memory sticks. These are the aluminium ones and I think it's fine to just get the aluminium ones if you are using like a copper container. You don't need to have both copper heatsinks and copper container. If you, even if you want to get very like smooth temperature control, if you want to maintain some uh, temperature range on the memory. It's usually enough if you have at least like copper on either of those two and then you don't need that much LN2 to reach the maximum temperatures of uh, liquid nitrogen. So uh, I want to share some like personal findings what I got with these memories. First of all the worst part about these memory heatsinks is the compatibility. These don't have the very same uh, uh, mounting layout as the very original Corsair Dominator GT. So you cannot just buy these memory heatsinks and attach them like out of the box to any of the normal like uh, water cooling blocks from other vendors or any of the common uh, memory LN2 containers from other vendors. So here I already removed the screws but you can see it the mounting screws are on the far edges of the uh, memory heatsink as most of the available mass is on the far edges over here. So that's a problem because the Dominator GT mounting holes are somewhere over here like over here and over here. So that's a problem. So uh, you can get those uh, running even with the barked honeycomb RAM container but you need to do some kind of modifications what I did myself. So I actually have uh, some of the, so I have the box ones over here. So these are the mounting holes of the generic like uh, Dominator GT layout and uh, the uh, ones that are on the uh, 
with Pauliria 5 heatsinks, they are a bit further away, right towards the edges. So uh, what I actually did to the RAM container was that I drilled extra holes at the far edges. So you can see over here, I drilled some extra holes over here and over here, and now I can use the Beats Power heatsinks just fine with the Barked Honeycomb uh, RAM container. I do like the Barked container and I didn't want to pay or I didn't want to buy the Beats Power LM2 container just for this purpose or just for using these heatsinks. But of course, if you don't have any uh, memory container, then it's easiest to just get the uh, Beats Power container with the heatsinks, if you ask me. The only question at that point is that do the heatsinks support every uh, memory generation? They should support DDR4 at least, if I'm not completely mistaken, I mean. But the biggest question is that do they support DDR3? Like for example, here's one uh, power chip based uh, memory stick over here with uh, fine tuned custom heat sinks made by Barks for DDR3. So uh, the height is uh, somewhat the same and uh, well, the overall dimensions are the same. But the biggest question is that do these heat sinks support DDR3 memory? If you can get them uh, running just fine, even with DDR3, by utilizing different uh, uh, thermal pads, then you should be good to go. So then the whole uh, combination should be pretty awesome, like uh, from the get-go. So both the heat sinks and the LN2 container combined. But yeah, so that's what I did pretty much. So uh, the only like mistake about the uh, actual use, what I wanted to like bring out on this video is the installation. So I actually printed the uh, installation guide from uh, the product page of these memory heatsinks. So you can see over here, here's the uh, uh, installation layout. The uh, biggest like question mark is this uh, orientation of the stick itself. So this is a uh, single sided DDR5 memory. How they suggest you to install the memory with the uh, heatsink. So it's hard to say because here we have, oh well, you, you do need to use thermal pad on the both sides. But if you ask me, if you use single-sided memory, as this already suggests, DDR5 single-sided module, you should have the ICs themselves facing the uh, cooling plate that runs colder or has direct thermal connection with the container itself. So this plate over here, it doesn't have direct thermal uh, like connection or transfer with the other cooling plate. So there's actually uh, the stick in between these plates. It's actually possible, at least in theory, although the practical difference may be small, this cooling plate over here will run warmer than this cooling plate over here. As the power consumption of uh, memory, like computer RAM overall is very small, I think it might not make that much of a difference. But if you want to get the absolute best performance out of uh, these memory modules, I think you should put the uh, memory ICs of the memory stick facing towards the colder plate of the uh, uh, memory heatsink combination, if you ask me. That's, that's what I did, at least in my case, and I actually got some pretty okay numbers out of these Trident Z5 6400 sticks. I think the highest fre frequency I saw was like 8100 to 8200-ish in Geekbench 3 and with pretty nice memory score overall with 1200K. So I actually uh, uh, removed the main mounting screws already. What you do get on this design compared to the Barked heatsinks is these uh, like tiny in-between screws which you can use to make very fine-tuned adjustments to control the uh, like mounting pressure on the memory stick. The main like uh, thing you need to watch out is that you get the memory stick like uh, aligned perfectly. So I actually can show you over here. So if we look carefully, if we uh, compare the memory PCB to the memory heatsinks, we can see that the memory stick sits pretty well, like perfectly right at the center. So it's not like leaning towards either of the uh, mounting plates or the cooling plates. So you need to use thick enough thermal pad on 
the empty side if we are if we run uh, single sided memory i mean and then you just need to utilize the uh, small screws that go in between the cooling plates to get the memory stick itself perfectly aligned at the center i mean in between the memory heatsink or the cooling plates of the memory heatsink so that it doesn't uh, have like bad contact on uh, the chips themselves so let's actually take the uh, uh, heatsink apart now so no i actually uh, put the uh, small screw pieces the wrong way around you need to uh, leave the whole side to this side of the heatsink so that you can actually use them so uh, here let me show you in this example now i had the ic's facing towards the cooler plate so you can see over here we have we can see the print of the chips themselves on this thermal pad and then we can see the like the print of the uh, pmic on the memory stick on this relatively thick thermal pad over there so they only support or they only uh, give you these very long uh, black thermal pads i think these are one millimeter thick thermal pads i think they should be that those are the only ones you get with the heat sinks themselves but i did use one and a half millimeter thick thermal pad for the pmic so i uh, demonstrated or I, I, I improvised a little bit myself. These are more like my personal like findings or like methods for using these memory heat sinks with DDR5 memory stick. Sticks, I mean. And now let's remove the second part of the heat sink. So on the second side, we can see the very same black thermal pads on the opposite side of the memory stick or the memory sticks PCB right right where the memory chips roughly are as you can see over here the center has been empty and on the back side we have that's a half a millimeter thermal pad plus one and a half millimeter thermal pad these are the arctic blue thermal pads with this combination i had pretty okay like overall mounting pressure the temperature result was absolutely perfect and i could get the uh, the memory stick itself like perfectly aligned in between the cooling plates so the only thing i did wrong in this case was that i put the in between screws the incorrect way around so i couldn't control the pressure the pressure exactly using an allen key but you can use an allen key to control the mounting pressure on the memory stick like in very fine tune adjustments and of course, if you want to insulate the stick itself for LN2, which I recommend you should be doing, I at least used Vaseline all over the memory stick and I just cleaned the top part of the chips right before installing the heatsink combination. Those are pretty much my findings. So if uh, you have some hard time getting these heatsinks like properly like installed, if you want to go the same route what I did, if you want to make the chips themselves to face the cooler plate of the heatsink combination then you can use these steps what i did so uh, i think you can use any uh, like thermal pad which you want to use but i would use some very elastic thermal pads like what Bart's recommends you to use with his uh, heatsink combination because if you use a very elastic uh, thermal pad then it generally has the least chance of like anything going wrong or getting damaged so uh, that should be one and a half millimeter thick thermal pad for the pmic and then roughly two millimeter thermal pad on the back side right behind the pmic on the empty side of the memory stick so uh, yeah that's half a millimeter plus one and a half millimeter thick thermal pad so you can just use like two millimeter thermal pad over there and just cut the uh, thermal pad to size so you don't need to cover the whole uh, top part of the back side of the memory stick over here the black ones that you get with the uh, heat sinks themselves they are pretty good the only minus part about them like with any thermal pad pretty much is that so once you use the memory sticks uh, a lot on ln2 the thermal pads start to crack and you need to replace them quite frequently as you can see over here i have some uh, damaged thermal pad uh, remnants over there so uh, now when i get the uh, heatsink uh, 
like back together I will just replace these thermal pads over here with uh, new ones from over here the back side thermal pads they don't have any damage whatsoever so that's what I just wanted to mention at the end of this video and oh I actually forgot to mention if you want to go for the same route what I did so modding some other RAM LN2 container for these heat sinks like for example uh, one from EK or from Barks like if you want to uh, mod the honeycomb ram pot from box for these heat sinks i recommend you use a handheld dremel for that purpose just buy a set of these uh, diamond grinding bits and you should be good to go I, I actually used one of these to finish the job at the start i used just a very basic drill but you but it's very easy to make a pretty bad outcome on the pot itself so that's why my whole finish wasn't actually that perfect on uh, the outer ends of the uh, honeycomb ram container so but if you use a handheld dremel the whole modding procedure will be pretty uh, easy to do in the end but yeah so huge thanks to bits power for helping me out right at the end part of the Corsair ddr5 competition give me a thumbs up if you like to see this video and hear about my personal uh, findings and experiences with these memory heat sinks i will put all of the important uh, links down in the description box of this video so definitely check out these uh, heat sinks as well as the ln2 container by bits power if you are interested in these products and uh, yeah subscribe to my channel thanks for watching one of my videos once again and i will see you on the next one